Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about the top 100 list that came out from CBS, as you can see on the bottom there, but uh, we're going to jump into spring game takeaways now, and there is so much to get to. Uh, we're going to start in Penn State and kind of work our way through Bama, Tennessee, Miami, and then Utah to finish it off, so tons to get to. We might have one more of these segments throughout the week, but not exactly sure. Still kind of breaking down all the spring games and um, what was worth taking away from what was not kind of uh, type of thing. But Penn State uh, was a very interesting one. It all started with Ke uh, Keandre Lambert-Smith. We have seen him enter the portal uh, since this game, but he was someone that was just not present. Uh, and a lot of Penn State fans expected him to be leading into this day, but the wide receiver group in general was not necessarily awe-inspiring in this game. Uh, I think Julian Fleming had a solid day, but not necessarily what you wanted. There was a ton of wins, so it was a relatively sloppy game throwing the ball uh, with Drew Aller and these wide receivers, but at the end of the day, it's really hard to um, you know, uh, fault them for that too, too much because of the conditions that they were playing under, but obviously, you're going to have to play and win, so it's going to be interesting to see this Penn State team develop. Um, no Nicholas Singleton or Catron Allen in this game, but Cam Wallace did play. He's the third string around there, and they love this kid. Uh, he seemed to, he had a very, very good day. This is going to be a run-heavy offense. Uh, Andy Kotelnicki has made that very clear over his time at Kansas, and I think it gives them the opportunity to have a ton of different bodies uh, at running back, and Cam Wallace definitely needed these reps more than Nicholas Singleton and Catron Allen, so very good to see him out there, and I think they have three guys now that they can go to pretty much at any point and feel very confident in that that's a huge help to a team that is going to be running the ball probably about 60 to 66 percent of the time I would assume this upcoming year um the O-line looked solid for how many guys that they're losing and replacing uh through different measures I think this O-line is uh still a lot up in the air for sure but um I think if you're going to see them this early on and they look that good I think you feel pretty good as a Nittany Lions fan and then the defense overall, it's going to be good. Uh, I'm not necessarily worried about that. Uh, they've been good since James Franklin has been there. He's recruited very well, and now they have Tom Allen in the door, and he's a fantastic defensive mind, a guy that can put together a lot more with a lot less, uh, and he has one of the best players in the country in Abdul Carter, in my opinion. He moved to edge this offseason from the linebacker position, kind of taking over for Chop Robinson and Adisa Isaac, the two guys that were huge forces on that edge uh, for Penn State uh, last year, but Abdul Carter might be the best athlete of the three, and I know that sounds crazy with the athlete that Chop Robinson is, but Abdul Carter is an absolute difference maker in giving him the ability to play edge, and then if you need to move him back to linebacker, you can. Um, he has the ability to, to essentially do whatever he wants on the field, which is a luxury that not many people have, and I think he's going to be a total difference maker for this defense throughout the year. Um, but I think this was a, a spring game that I think a lot of us didn't take too much from necessarily. I think we all know uh, they need wide receiver help. That became even more apparent with uh, Lambert Smith finding his way into the portal. But I think this uh, overall, this team is exactly how I expected them to look. Uh, this defense is going to be dominant. This uh, offense is going to be run heavy, and then Drew Allers just kind of have to pick his moments. Uh, he was not necessarily great in this game by any means, but the wind really did hurt him and uh, didn't necessarily give him much of a fighting shot. Also, some drops that were just really tough. Uh, so I think overall, this is a game that we won't really know a ton about Penn State until games really start. I think Drew Aller is the big question mark in all of this. He is not necessarily taking the massive leaps that uh, Penn State fans were hoping for, but at the end of the day, the talent is there, the ability is there, so uh, maybe it'll all open up and fall, who knows, but overall, this game, um, you kind of got what you expected for the most part. Cam Wallace was the one part of this that I thought was really interesting and definitely gives them a really good uh, running back stable heading into this upcoming year. Um, but let's move on to uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and talk about the Crimson Tide. The first spring game without Nick Saban at the helm had to be a little bit weird for Bama fans, but there were tons there, about 72,000 uh, fans in attendance, so uh, they were very excited for this game, obviously, to see the guys uh, the first time under Kalen DeBoer. A lot uh, on the table, for sure, and a lot of criticism and a lot of... Uh, compliments definitely were on the table this Saturday, but Jalen Milrow, I feel like, got a lot of compliments throughout the day. He made a ton 
of NFL level throws that you didn't really see from him last year. He made a beautiful throw to Jeremy Bernard kind of across the field on a um, crossing route that I thought was just incredible. It was a throw that he doesn't make last year, to be totally honest with you. He either overshoots him or under sh- underthrows it and it gets picked or, or something happens, right? So him being able to make those throws is a total difference maker for this team going forward and gives this wide receiver group that might not be the most talented in the world they need the quarterback that can, you know, put the ball on them pretty much every time, and it looks like Jalen Monroe is slowly taking those steps towards uh, making those plays. But the running backs were the people that kind of stole the show here. They combined for four touchdowns between Jamarian Miller, Richard Young, and Justice Haynes. Uh, Jamarian Miller was the MVP of the game, so he was the one that kind of stole the show. He was just incredible throughout the day. Richard Young had a very aggressive touchdown run uh, later in the day, and Justice Haynes is Justice Haynes. I, he's the one that I have literally zero questions about. I think he's going to be an absolute difference maker. It might be Jamaria Miller to start the year, to be totally honest with you, but Justice Haynes and Richard Young will get plenty of run. I think that's the ability of having three running backs that are among uh, probably the top 30 or 40 in the entire country. You have the ability to rotate them in and out, keep uh, this defense on its heels, and really just impose your will. So I think what we expected to see from uh, Bama last year with running the ball a ton and kind of dominating people on the inside, I think we could very well see that this year with the guards they have and with these running back talent. It's just going to be um, a lot of run plays, a lot of aggression from that offense, I would assume, early and often, to be totally honest with you, even with Kayla Nabor and Nick Sheridan being the ones kind of pulling the strings over there. But defense is going to be um, very interesting to watch over the next couple of weeks. I think that back end needs to be filled out a little bit more. The young players have been playing well. Um, you know, Zabian Brown, uh, Jalen Makuba, I think both those guys have played really solid, but at the end of the day, you probably need a little bit more experience back there. You probably need a couple more, you know, big time players. So I expect them to be very active in the portal. I think they could be probably one of the most active teams in the portal in the entire country, which we'll actually get to here in the next segment. But I think overall, Bama is in a position where nothing is really off the table. Obviously, they have quarterback taken care of. They have linebackers. They have uh, offensive linemen coming in, although they might need a right tackle to help out um, as well. So it'll be really interesting to see this team kind of develop. I think it'll be a slightly different starting 22 um, by this time in two weeks uh, than it is right now. But at the end of the day, uh, Bama right now looks pretty good, uh, all things considered. And I think they'll only get better throughout the time. But one of the things that is still up in the air and should really worry Bama fans is that kicker position. Connor Talty was supposed to be the guy uh, throughout spring that was thought to be the guy, but multiple kickers tried extra points and field goals. Uh, Talty did miss a field goal throughout the game, so not necessarily the greatest showing from the guy that they expected to be um, the place kicker this upcoming year. And Bama fans know too well that that can be a huge difference maker for a year. Will Reichard was an absolute godsend for uh, Bama fans after a long time of just not having a very good kicking game. So hopefully they can figure that out because as of right now, it looks like they don't have anyone pegged as the starting kicker over there. But let's move right along to Tennessee and let's talk about this wide receiver group because they were the people that absolutely stole the show. We had long touchdowns from Mike Matthews, the very talented freshman out of Parkview High School in Georgia. We had Chaz Nimrod with uh, long touchdown catches. Uh, Jake Merklinger, the uh, talented freshman quarterback, was someone that really looked good throughout this game. Definitely someone that Tennessee fans can be very excited for in the future. We'll have a couple of years to kind of learn the offense as uh, Iamaliava goes through his time in uh, Knoxville. But at the end of the day, this is a kid that is going to be very, very talented in the future and has the ability to keep that uh, you know good quarterback rolling at Tennessee. Hopefully, Nico can kind of set that off on the right foot this year. But Nico overall looked really solid. He had the touchdown to Chaz Nimrod, had a a number of really, really good plays, but didn't necessarily light it up the way that Tennessee fans wanted, but was still very solid and answered a lot of the questions that people had. So I think he did plenty in this game. The defense was definitely uh, disruptive up front. There were some O-line injuries, so not sure how much that kind of played a part in this, but the defense overall will be on the lookout for the right guys, especially on the back end of that defense. I feel like 
Um, they have a good group there. I think they could definitely use a couple more guys just to make it more solid throughout this offseason. So these next couple of weeks will be very interesting on the defensive side of the ball for Tennessee. I think they'll be one of the teams that is very active in terms of just finding guys that fit, um, just finding pretty much any position that can be a difference maker for them uh, in Saturdays in the fall because they have a lot of openings, to be totally honest with you, minus those edge rushing positions and some of the D-line positions, I think. There's a lot of opening on that defense for just any player that can you know make plays for them. So we'll see what happens there. But let's move on to Miami and let's talk about Cam Ward. He has totally taken over this team. Um, I think a lot of people, when he came in, he came in a little bit later in the process because he flirted with the NFL draft and that type of thing. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I think there was um, some question about his ability to, you know, take the bull by the horns, be the leader of this team, but I don't think that's much of a question anymore. Um, this is very obviously his team. He had, re- had a really, really good day, went 19 for 24, uh, 324 yards, had at least one touchdown to Xavier Restrepo. Um, him, Restrepo, and Jacoby George seem to be on the same page, which is absolutely huge for this offensive uh, success. And the offense won the day pretty comfortably, which is what I think all of us expected. Um, This secondary really struggled, uh, which is something that they really have to worry about. Losing guys like Cam Kitchens and James Williams on that back end is not an easy thing to replace, point blank period. So it'll be really interesting to see if they add guys through the portal. I think they will be very active in the portal, especially on the defensive side of the ball, um, and maybe even running back, um, which we'll talk about here later. But I think it's a very interesting team that just needs some help on the defensive side of the ball. So I would expect some portal uh, influx, at least in the next couple of weeks. Uh, One guy that kind of popped up that maybe people weren't expecting, or if you're a Hurricane fan, you already knew the name, but Elijah Lofton, a tight end uh, who just came in this spring, had a big day. He's someone that looks really smooth on the field, is a great pass catcher, and could be one of the other you know incredible weapons that they have on this team. I think they could be even after another wide receiver in all of this, but we'll see what happens with Miami. I think they could be a total difference maker in all of this uh, transfer portal the next couple of weeks. I think overall, the defense, you know, they're very much hit or miss. They made a couple of plays in the second half for some turnovers, but didn't necessarily do the things you wanted them to do on a consistent basis. So I would expect them to be uh, kind of the area that changes the most over the next couple of weeks for Miami. But um, overall, a very solid showing, but the defense definitely does need help down there. Um, But let's move on to Utah And let's talk about Cam Rising and Dorian Singer. Uh, Cam Rising is finally healthy. It feels like we were waiting uh, a million years last year for him to be healthy. It was just every single week you were waiting for that uh, tweet to come through that said he was healthy, and it never came. So, uh, But he's finally healthy. He's finally looking the part again, and him and Dorian Singer seem to be on the same page, uh, which is huge news for them. That is a duo that I had in the top 10 of my quarterback wide receiver duos going into this year. And it seems like it's rolling early. So it's definitely something that they're going to need if they want to win the Big 12 in year one, if they want to be the team that a lot of people expect them to be. So it'll be really interesting to watch. Uh, Zach Wilson's brother, Isaac, had a big time day. Uh, He looked like an absolute dude in this game. And I think the uh, quarterback position is in a little bit better shape than uh, I thought it was, honestly, going forward. He went 6 for 8, 115 yards, 2 touchdowns. So about as good as you can possibly do. Uh, Definitely gave him a huge boost in the backup quarterback battle, and we might have to see him. You know, Cam Rising has had a a little bit of injury trouble throughout his time, and hopefully he doesn't this year, but you always got to be ready for it. So uh, definitely a great uh, option for them at backup quarterback. It'll be interesting to see if we see him uh, much throughout the year, but... One guy that popped up on the defensive side of the ball is Cam Coleman, the cornerback that came over from Michigan, a guy that is an absolute game changer. He's someone they absolutely need on that back end. I talked about Teo Johnson a couple of times on here. He's going to be great, but he needs other people around him, and it feels like Cam Calhoun is really becoming that guy. So very, very excited for this back end of this defense. I knew that Kyle Whittingham was going to put it together, but it's going to be interesting to see who those guys are and who the difference makers really are at the end of the day. But Utah was very pass heavy uh, on Saturday, which is not something you really expect to see. I think um, it's very possible that they're pass heavy with the wide receivers they have and Cam Rising being in full control of that offense. But 
it definitely could uh, be a sign that they need some running back help in the portal. They lost to Quinton Jackson, who had a great day in Arkansas spring day uh, this past weekend, but he's uh, they definitely need some help at running back. Micah Bernard is still there, but need some more for sure. Uh, Jalen Glover as well. Um, but I think that's a position definitely to watch for Utah as we kind of go in. There's going to be plenty of talented running backs, that's for sure. But um, I like this team a lot. They continue to improve with Cam Rising coming back. The floor was always going to be high, and the ceiling is going to be even higher. So very, very excited to see what this team can do. I think they're going to be an absolute, uh, going to be in an absolute battle in the Big 12. I think them and Kansas State will will really be vying for that top spot, but plenty of other teams right behind them. So Utah is kind of setting the pace right now, but plenty of teams will have plenty to say about that. Um, but we're going to take our second break here. And when we come back, we're going to talk about Chris Hummer's transfer portal superlatives. He gave out um, some teams to watch, some positions to watch. Just want to break that down for you guys and some players that have already kind of joined the conversation here uh, only, you know, a couple hours into the transfer portal era. But uh, we will break that down right after this. So stick with us. <laughs> 